My name is Justin Waller. I have an online platform. I do not any longer have a YouTube. I work very hard to give the best advice I can possibly give to young men and young women. I own a real estate portfolio with over 400 doors, and I started a steel company at 24 years old, and we now hang steel all across America. So, in the career. Justin Waller, one of Andrew Tate's most loyal little lapdogs, has been on a little podcast tour, and there is one thing in this world that poor little Justin misses dearly. Instagram, you said they s snaked your YouTube. Man, they got me. They got me. So there was a there was an article that came out of Vice News, basically saying that because I was promoting Andrew's content, the real world, the world's best online school, by the way, go join. That. Uh, my YouTube needed to go. So I woke up one morning, no strikes, no warnings, nothing. Never had a strike on the channel. Lost it. What happened to the YouTube channel? There was a Vice article that came out that said because I was promoting the real world, which is the world's best online school, that they got in touch with YouTube and got me taken down. They called me the heir apparent to Andrew. So it was gone. I woke up one morning, it was completely gone. I'd never had a stripe. I'd never had a warning, nothing. If we talk about this, they might not let you hear it. They might not let us there because <laughs> apparently that's why you maybe lost your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll start with YouTube. Is that why you lost your YouTube channel? I, th I think. think it was more about the online school. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, which is an indirect attack on, you know, Andrew. That's right. Following an article from Vice News, Justin's YouTube channel was terminated. There's no doubt this was devastating for Jay Waller. He went from having multiple YouTube channels with over a million subscribers between them to just having a sad, pathetic Rumble channel that no one cares about. On these podcasts, Justin thought he was being very clever playing politics, pretending that he had no beef with YouTube or even Vice News. We're working hard to get it back. I'm not going to talk poorly about mm -hmm. YouTube. I think that likely YouTube did what they thought was best in the situation based off the information that they had. They're trying to get them off of everything. Vice News is spearheading a lot of that. And um, they attacked me. Mm -hmm. They they sent my accounts to YouTube and YouTube took them down. But I'm not going to talk poorly about YouTube. If YouTube thinks that they're doing the right thing or did the right thing, then or got the information they got, the only thing I would say to YouTube is watch my videos. Mm -hmm. Watch what I'm saying to these young men. Not here to talk badly about YouTube. I'm doing everything in my power to get it back. However, that's how I lost it, man. So we got up to 500,000 on one channel and 300 and 200, right at a million across three channels, lost them all in a day. And uh, so now we just have Instagram and Twitter and Rumble. Do you think they realize what kind of damage that does? I don't think that you can put a monetary number on it, honestly. Over the course of a career, being able to talk to the people that follow you on the biggest platform in the world? No, I don't think you can. However, yeah, I don't own the platform. And I think that they can dump you for any reason they want. So here we are. But it's been very clear on Justin's little podcast tour that he's on a mission to get his YouTube channel back. So I'm not going to sit here and talk poorly about YouTube. Yeah. However... I think that if I get an opportunity to have them re actually review my videos and the reason they took me down, then I might have a good shot at getting it back. So uh, I'm going to choose to take the high ground. Sounds if you good. Will. Yeah. We have to press forward. I'm going to try to get them back. My content is very clean. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly talk about why Justin was actually banned from YouTube. He mentioned an article from Vice News that caused him to get banned. There was actually a series of articles that helped encourage Apple and Google to remove the real world app from the Play Store and the App Store and helped encourage YouTube to nuke billions of views worth of recruitment videos for Andrew Tate's so-called online university, the real world. And Justin's channels got nuked in the process for a very obvious reason. He was constantly using his channel to recruit literal children into Andrew Tate's programs. The idea that him losing his channels came as any sort of a surprise, or that he would be in any way justified in getting his channels back, is just absurd. To give you an idea, here's a few examples of Justin using his YouTube channels to lure young boys into Andrew Tate's programs like an absolute predator. Let's do it. Bro, first kid to have friends over and figure out a way to stay up all night making money. First kid to pay his parents' mortgage next month. Ooh. I'll do a call with on my channel. Hey, Justin, I'm 14. 
working on self-improvement and want to start making money. I thought about getting a job this summer and use it to fund a side hustle. Any tips? If, if you're going to make money, I would consider joining the real world. It's only $50 a month. You can cut a couple lawns and make that. I think paying attention to what game you're going to play. What Hi, I'm 12 years old and I joined the real world. Can you give me advice, please? Yeah, bro. Go in there and listen to everything that Luke says. Go listen to all the professors and do exactly what they say and work your little ass off. You're 12 years old. You're, you'll be fine, man. Hey, Justin. 14 and in, T in TRW. My parents think TRW is dumb and want me to have a social life. Do you have any tips? I, I don't agree with your parents. Only because what are you going to do? Go hang out with some 14-year-olds, probably do some shit you're not supposed to be doing. In the real world, you're going to learn how to make money. And you're going to be stopping to do push-ups. This is a very good community. You are going to be hanging out with people in the range of your age. I don't think your parents probably understand what the real world is fully. Maybe they will when you, um, when you help them out with the bills. And any of you guys that are thinking about joining the real world, I'm telling you, message me on Instagram, just 7 uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's the best school on the planet. There is no school that is going to teach you literally how to make money today without charging you tens of thousands of dollars. This is how I made money today. It, it is a fucking joke to think that any of you guys would go to college really at all with as good as the real world is. Like I see it every day. I get messages every day. I'm like, I cannot believe this 13 year old is making more money than his parents. And that he go, has to go to school and he can still do it. This kid is in like sixth, seventh grade in the real world making real money. And it, it's just, it's the most incredible thing that I've ever seen, bro. The real world. Justin was never even subtle about it. He wanted to recruit as many boys as possible as young as 12 years old into Andrew and Tristan Tate's programs where they would be indoctrinated, isolated from their friends and family, and push to work extreme 16 hour plus days in a cult-like environment. If there's any updates in Justin's quest to get back on YouTube so he can recruit 12 year olds for Andrew Tate, I'll keep you all posted. Now that that's out of the way, it's impossible to look at several podcasts featuring Justin Waller and not find some extreme cringe. Though the rest of this video will be some good old fashioned Jay Waller cringe. Funnily enough, Justin told Graeme Stephen and Jack Shelby on the Ice Coffee Hour that it's unfair for people to call him a cringy douchebag. It's interesting, you get a lot of criticism online. Like you're a very controversial person. Yeah, I hate that. What criticism do you think I is, wish I could hug him. <laughs> is completely unfair? And what's a criticism of yourself that you think is fair? If you were to criticize yourself, yeah, something you think um, you can work on? I think it's probably unfair to call me a cringy douchebag. I think that any person that if they got to actually spend any time with me would realize that's not true. Justin shared some of his business expertise with Brandon Turner. He told us what the benefits are of hiring people to work for him that know him from social media. When somebody comes to work for me today, they already know me. Yeah. yeah, they want to work for me. They believe in me and my cause. You know, like that camera guy that's behind you. Yeah, that kid works twenty four seven. <laughs> he doesn't know what day it is. <laughs> he doesn't. And there you go, guys. If you're planning a career in social media, you can take advantage of the fact that the people you hire will already like you by exploiting them and having them work extreme hours, almost twenty four seven, to the point where they don't even know where they are. Justin Waller really did learn from the best when it comes to self-snitching. A few weeks ago, Justin got a massive break considering how in the shitter his career is. He appeared on Michael Knowles' podcast. He may have saw this as somewhat of an audition, being able to appear on the Daily Wire network. Unfortunately for Justin, Michael's ultra-religious, conservative audience absolutely hated him. Unfortunately, Mr. Waller completely forgot that he was no longer talking to 12-year-old boys. Sure. Again, I, I love women. Let me be very clear about this. But. I, I, and in fact, I have quite the reputation for loving them a bit too much. Yeah. And, and my wife helps, by the way. So, y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> but the point I'm trying Wait, to make. Wait, your wife helps the hypergo? No. the you got girlfriends, G. Really? Yeah, man. I live the dream, bro. 
I live the dream. It was at that moment that Justin's chances of having a show on the Daily Wire crashed and burned. Michael asked Justin something about his dream life with five girlfriends that he clearly hadn't yet considered. Yeah, yeah. Same Do thing. you think having these girlfriends is good, is good for the girlfriends? Can be. Yeah, in many ways. In the long term, is it good for the girlfriends? That's a very interesting question. I think that it, it, it would be a long-winded answer because I help them in so many ways. Yep. But I think in the, in the stage they are in their life that it, it generally is a good thing. I know that they want to be with me. I know that they follow up a lot and I'm busy. One could be easily forgiven for seeing clips of Justin Waller and thinking to themselves, there is no way this is a real person. Well, I regret to inform you that he is real. And not only has he most likely recruited thousands of little boys for Andrew Tate, but he features in the leaks of Andrew Tate's war room group chat, where Tate and his goons can be seen strategizing how they're going to traffic women into online sex work. So, it really should go without saying that if YouTube even consider bringing this absolute degenerate back onto their platform, they are absolutely out of their minds. I live the dream, bro. I live the dream.